in power. So, Alicia, have you been listening to any Beethoven lately? Oh, my friend, I'm not sure my emotions could take that right now. I completely understand. Yet, I was just so happening to be listening to the Kreutzer Sonata just the other day. Oh, you mean Sonata Mulatica. Quite the controversial name, that one. What do you mean? Well, the Kreutzer Sonata was not originally written for Mr. Kreutzer. In fact, the virtuoso Mr. Kreutzer complained that the piece was too difficult. No kidding! So I'm guessing that Beethoven initially had another violinist in mind. You guessed right. And he was none other than George Bridgetower. Take it away, Mario. George Bridgetower was, at one time, a BFF of none other than Ludwig van Beethoven. Born in Poland in 1778 to a family with connections to Prince Esterhazy, christened Hieronymus Hippolytus de Augustus, he eventually settled in England, recognized as a leading virtuoso violinist. His father, Jonas Frederikas de Augustus, was of African descent, while his mother, Maria Schmidt, hailed from a German-Polish background. This made Bridgetower biracial, what was then known as a mulatto, or a person of mixed race doesn't quite roll off the tongue these days. His charismatic father, known as Frederick, propelled the young Bridgetower's career, noticing and fostering an innate musical talent in his young son. It is rumored, yet not substantiated, that the young Bridgetower studied with Haydn, the then court composer at Esterhazy's Palace, Eisenstadt. Bridgetower made his first public appearance at the age of seven, having already performed for Emperor Joseph II. The Bridgetower family lived in Mainz at the time, a musical epicenter in Western Europe. Frederick took his young son, who would assume the name George, on a tour in Paris, one concert of which was attended by Thomas Jefferson. After the successful series and many rave reviews, the family relocated to England. Frederick was a savvy promoter, knowing just how to sensationalize himself and his son. Playing up the trendiness of exoticism, he donned flowing Turkish robes, casting an aura of enigma and foreign allure. People were eager to meet this alleged African prince and his prodigious son. George soon played for members of the British royal family, including King George III, Queen Charlotte, and then Prince of Wales, the future King George IV. Bridge Tower's astonishing ascent elicited a tremendous public response, particularly after his debut in London at the age of 11. Bridge Tower and his father were regular fixtures at Carlton House, a residency of the Prince of Wales, which regularly programmed a chamber music series. But Frederick's behavior became increasingly erratic and troublesome. He reportedly drank excessively and womanized, gambling his son's money away and treating him cruelly. The young George sought protection from the Prince of Wales, and his father, after spending time in an asylum, was sent back to Germany in disgrace. Under the protection of the Prince of Wales, Bridgetower's development and subsequent career flourished. He was afforded every opportunity to study with the most accomplished musicians in London, including Thomas Atwood, François Hippolyte Barthélemy, and Giovanni Battista Viotti, his greatest influence. Beethoven originally composed the notoriously difficult Kreutzer Sonata for Bridgetower. But after a successful premiere of the masterpiece with Bridgetower playing, the two had a falling out. Bridgetower reportedly insulted a woman who was a friend of Beethoven. The temperamental composer would have none of it, and all ties were severed. Consequently, the composer retracted the sonata's dedication, officially dubbing it the Kreutzer Sonata for the French virtuoso violinist Rodolphe Kreutzer. Yet, Kreutzer was not a particular fan of Beethoven's music, calling the sonata outrageously unintelligible, thus never once playing it. Beethoven's withdrawal was all but a career killer for Bridgetower, erasing his name from society and ultimately history. And this was not the first dedication that Beethoven had rescinded. He stripped Napoleon of this honor also, pulling the dictator's namesake from his third symphony. Yet, unlike Bridgetower, the powerful and white Bonaparte did not need Beethoven's musical dedication to cement his place in history or to validate his career. So what you're saying is that his entire career essentially hinged on Beethoven. The humble musician Bridgetower outlived Beethoven, but he perished in poverty and anonymity. 
His death certificate was signed by a woman who just so happened to be a witness when he passed. The New York Times recently profiled the life of George Bridgetower, hopefully exposing his genius to millions of readers, giving him some recognition he so richly deserves. Yes, recognition that was literally robbed from him during his lifetime. So, Alicia, we've now covered two men, but I imagine there must be some equally brilliant, all but forgotten women forging careers in classical music throughout history. As a matter of fact, you are correct. Let's get into that next episode with the renegade trailblazer, Elizabeth Taylor Greenfield. Just take it easy.